Well, we do apologize. Some slight technical difficulties before heading into the beginning of this broadcast, but here we are, game two of the day-night doubleheader as the Fordham Rams winners in the morning portion, Colin, against the West Point Army Black Knights. The Rams now hosting the Fairfield Stags, but winners their last time out by the score of 4-2. to two. This is a Fairfield team that's 5-12, and 12, Will, but that's not indicative of the talent that's on this roster. They can swing the bats with the best, and then we'll have to see if Fordham's pitching staff is up to the challenge. Well, it'll be six foot one, 205-pound graduate student Dominic Kuna out of Lincoln, Rhode Island, making the start, and he will face the center fielder, Ryan Stolo, who takes outside for ball one. We are underway in game two, first pitch, at 2.46. Kuna, a big, strong guy, pitches from the windup. You can tell he's got some power behind each pitch he throws. And that one popped in the air. It's going to be Gennaro backpedaling on it and calling for it is TZ who makes the grab, a little bit of a Bermuda triangle, if you want to put it that way. But nevertheless, one away, and that'll bring up the third baseman, Dean Ferrara, Wyckoff, New Jersey native, just about 30 minutes north of where we're at right now. Teasy, so slick in the outfield. That's not an easy play for any center fielder, especially with these dimensions here at Hulaham Park. And Kuna's 0-0 swung on and fouled. First base side out of play. Ferrara definitely loves to swing the bat. I've known Dean actually since I was 10 years old, and he always was a heavy swinger. And when he connects, it sure does fly. So Kuna Going to have to pitch to the defense who's shifting all the way to the left as Ferrara goes to the right side and it's booted off of Wachter's glove, flips over to first and Kuna makes the grab as Ferrara slid into the bag. It looked like his spike may have caught Kuna at the ankle who's limping now, trying to stretch out that right leg and hopefully he is all right. But two away now on the ground ball out, the three to one put out. And it looks like Coach Kevin Layton is going to have a word with the home plate umpire, Rich Franco. And you certainly hope Kuna is all right. On that play, though, Wachter went for the backhand. Looked as if he would have maybe had a moment, a second, to shuffle over and try and field it the old-fashioned way. Went for the style points for the easier uh, you know, put out, if you will, but just didn't work, didn't field it cleanly initially, but good on him to stay with the ball. Get it to first base. Now, Ferrara, not the fastest of base runners, but nevertheless, three for three on stolen base attempts. So you got to get that out as quick as you can, especially with the two hole hitter up. And that'll bring in the three hole hitter now, number 24, Matt Bergevin, first baseman. And Kuna's 0 0 is a strike at the knees on the inside half. It's 0 and 1. Kuna starts him off speed there. We'll have to see how he's able to mix his pitches and change the eye level of these hitters throughout the game. Kuna, a fastball slider changeup pitcher with another fastball right there, fouled out of play by Gervin. It's 0-2. And Bergevin, one of the better hitters for this Fairfield team, not someone you want to mess around with. He's in that three spot for a reason, Will, hitting 333 thus far. An off-speed pitch did not catch the inner half of the plate. Bergevin kind of tilts in and avoids that one. It'll be the first ball from Kuna. It's one and two. Kuna out of the windup and the pitch. A good block there from Pietro. Off-speed got him thinking. Didn't necessarily get Bergevin to jump by any stretch, but got it, got it in his head now that he can change speeds. Kuna getting the sign from the electronic watch introduced early in this season, the first season that Fordham has gone with the electronic pitch calling. And the 2-2 is upstairs and high. Account will run full now. It's 3-2 and two to Bergevin. And we talk about getting out of innings quickly, having neat innings, a big opportunity for Kuna to start this ball game the right way. Kuna working a little faster here. Here's the... 3-2 is cut on and missed, strike three, and Dominic Kuna, a great first half of his ball game. He sets down the Stags, one, two, three, with a big strikeout of Matt Bergevin. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on base. You are listening to Fordham Baseball, powered by WFUV Sports.
Hi, this is Michael K. WFUV Class of 1982. WFUV is your home for all things Fordham Athletics with live coverage of Fordham football, Fordham men's and women's basketball, in addition to our Saturday show one-on-one. -on -one. Stay right here on 90.7 FM for all things WFUV sports. Well, welcome back here to Houlihan Park on Moglia Stadium. It's nothing, nothing as we head to the bottom half of the first inning. The Fordham Rams coming off a nice victory against the Black Knights of West Point Army and now hosting the Fairfield University Stags. A cool first frame for Dominic Kuna as it is Colin. And now it'll be Ben Alexson to throw from the right side of the rubber for the Stags this afternoon. Alex, an interesting pitcher, a freshman, clocking in at 6'2", 195 pounds from Vermont, was the 2023 Vermont Baseball Gatorade Player of the Year after recording a 1.36 ERA and 88 strikeouts in 36 innings during his senior year. This is the kind of player that Fairfield is very high on. He's the type of player they want to attract to their program. So far this year, though, it's been a struggle. He has a 7.20 ERA, 0-1 on the year, looking for an opportunity to right the ship today. Has it been the easiest of campaigns for Alexson in his fourth start now as he will face Ryan Teasy, a guy who never really takes a day off. That is Colin, two for five in, uh, excuse me, two for four, I should say, in that win against West Point earlier this morning. Two singles back in the first and seventh innings in that contest, and just continues to climb up the ranks. And once again, that average well over 300, one of the better leadoff hitters that you can have in the A-10. Teasy certainly a hard-nosed player. Teasy takes a strike on the outside corner and away it is 0-1 to the Rams leadoff man, manning duties in center field. Teasy, the 0-1 from Alexson, breaking ball fouled well out of play and in to the Rose Hill parking lot. It's quickly... 0-2. Oh, it's easy, maybe just a touch behind that pitch. Had he been a second quicker, that could have been a single either off the middle or to the left side of the field. Alexson working really fast out of the windup. The 0-2 well upstairs. It's now 1-2 to the senior center fielder. Trying to start things off quickly for the Rams who, you know, did not have the easiest of paths to providing any offense really came from the bottom of the lineup against army and here's that one two it misses up and away count will run to two and two now nobody out no score it's 254 just coming on at 3 p.m a beautiful day to be at the ballpark let's play two and we're in our second now as teasy fouls another one off to that parking lot first base side out of play and we'll stay at one and two Teasy not fancy at all in terms of his batting stance, very chalk, not trying to go for style points, just wants to get the job done. Kind of looks like an Eric Davis from those bad boy Reds days as Teasy cuts on and misses at the breaking ball. Strike three from Alexson, his first punch out of the ball games comes from the first batter he faces. And now that'll bring up Daniel Bucciero, his and this is a fun matchup for Mr. Bucciero, isn't it, Colin? He's playing his twin brother for the second time this season. Identical twin, that is, Matthew Manning right field for the Stags on the opposite side of the ball this afternoon. And Daniel caught on in this strike number one from Alexson, who grooves in the fastball. It's 0-1. And, and this has been a trend for these Fordham hitters across the first two games, or across the two games that we've seen today is that they're not afraid to swing on the first pitch. Bucciero, oh one is caught on and missed once again. Another tenacious hack right there from Bucciero, and it's 0-2. To the former A-10 all-rookie selection from last season, Alexson. Sticking with the fastball in the outer half of the plate there, Bucciero does a good job, just kind of flings it out of play, and we will do it again at 0-2. Bucciero, certainly someone Fordham 
is hoping will come up big for them over the course of the year. Only a sophomore, definitely a lot of room for him to grow still. And cut on and miss. Bucciero down on strikes. Ben Alexson, a great start to his afternoon, his second punch out. And just like that, there are two away as the transfer from Vassar College, Andrew Canellis, will take his first inning hacks. Canellis this year has been a pleasure to see develop for Fordham, even as a graduate student, hitting 268. You know he wants to get that mark up, but you get these graduate guys thinking that eventually something will click. And it's a ground ball over to shortstop. The 6-3 to three put out will put Canellis back on the bench. The put out made by Luke Nomerer. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. The Rams, they go down in order here in the first. We've played one full at Moglia Stadium. You are listening to Fordham Baseball on WFUV Sports. Brian Gregor here, joined with Michael Calamari and Andrew Galata, three of your hosts for Nosebleeds, WFUV's only baseball podcast. Tune in every week as we recap the latest from the Bronx and Queens, as well as news from around the MLB. You can listen to Nosebleeds on Apple, Spotify, WFUVsports.org, or wherever you get your podcasts. Take a trip around the bases all season long with the Nosebleeds podcast on WFUV Sports. Welcome back to Moglia Stadium, Jack Coffee Field here in the Bronx, New York. A no score game, nothing doing in the first inning, and we kind of left off right where we picked up at uh, Colin. In terms of the pitcher's duel, Dominic Kuna, a great first inning, looking to make it another great second inning. But here in steps the Stags backstop, Ethan Hibbard. And Colin, he had quite the performance last time out. Had a three run, three home run game. He's only the fourth stag ever to have such a game. Certainly a powerhouse in that cleanup role. A team high eight home runs so far for Hibbert this year. Batting four, 77 through 17 games played. That's some serious mashing behind the dish as he takes that first one up for a ball. And here's the second pitch cut on and miss. A great breaking ball there from Kuna to even the count up at one and one. And for Kuna, it's going to be key to change eye level against a hitter like Hibbert who's going to be willing to swing. You know he's looking to mash something over the wall. As you said, Will, you want to keep him guessing and on his toes. Hibbert. Extreme shift on the backstop, and there's a fastball right on the out inside part of the plate for a strike, and it'll be one and two to the Fairfield catcher. And Kuna getting his sign from Prieto behind the dish using the electronic band they have now around their wrists in the windup. The one-two is low, and the count evens now. It's two and two. That's a smart pitch. You have a one-two count in that type of situation. You don't want to give him a meatball over the heart of the plate. You have some pitches to work with here. You can afford to throw a pitch here or there in the dirt with a one-two count. Kuna, set, and the payoff is low. Count will thicken now to three and two. And, Colin, you're absolutely right. Definitely don't want to just groove one down the middle there. Hibbard could make this a one nothing game in the blink of an eye. So Kuna being selective with his spots. The 3-2 hit. That one misses. Upstairs and away. Ball four. Ethan Hibbard. He's on with a leadoff walk. And you understand how that walk came to be. You're not trying to throw him something right over the heart of the plate. You want to throw a competitive strike, potentially competitive fastball, and he did that, almost clipped the outside part of the zone, just couldn't get it to stay within that box. Well, that'll bring in the twin brother of Fordham third baseman, Daniel Bucciero. Matt Bucciero, the right fielder for the Stags this afternoon. He'll take high on that breaking ball for a ball. It's 1-0. Bucciero this year, four home runs, 12 RBIs, hitting 242 at the moment with 11 runs. Bucciero, Matt and Daniel, very similar swings. I wonder why that is. I can only have so many guesses as Matt fouls that one off. Out of play, first base side. It's one and one. 
runs in the family, Will. It must. It must. The baseball gene. Once it's there, you never know how it'll spread. Kuna's 1-1 one, one lined back up the middle. Teasy gets a jump on it, and he makes the grab. A nice running play moving to his left and having to do a little swivel there. Ryan Teasy, excellent defender out there in center field. Catches the first loud out of the second. And Hibbard will retreat back to first as Bucciero. Nice line drive, kind of like his brother. Nothing but barrels. And if that had drifted a touch more to right center field, Bucciero could have been looking at extra bases and the Stags might have been able to get a run. Well, that'll bring up the left fielder, Paul Catalano. Left fielder for the Stags today is batting 273 in 12 games played and nine hits to his credit. Two doubles, three triples, and a home run. As that one is taken for a ball now, it's 2-0. and oh To the fair field left fielder, one out, one man on base. No score still here at Moglia Stadium. That one's cut on and fouled to the screen and out of play. The count will move now to one and two. Gennaro. And the further down you get in this Fordham lineup, you want to make sure, or the, in this Fairfield line, excuse me, you want to make sure you're challenging the hitters you're supposed to challenge. Another foul ball there from Cat Alano, and count all even up at two and two. And as I was saying before, Gennaro, and that is the freshman Madden Akko at second base today for this matchup against the Stags, playing in some double play depth, looking for a ground ball here is Kuna. He's set the 2-2, is a number over to Bucciero at third. That's five, on to Akko for one, and it's thrown wildly. Diego Prieto backing up nicely for Watker, so nothing but just one out there. It's a five to four put out if you're keeping score at home, and a E4 there, charged to Akko on the throw, but now there are two away, still just a runner on base. Kuna tried, got the ground ball he needed there, Colin, but did not get the double play. And Akko with the freshman mistake there, just not a pretty throw. It's not an easy play, but at this level, you're expected to make these types of plays. Just a missed opportunity there for Fordham. And nevertheless, it'll be the shortstop, Luke Namura, who takes on the outer half with that fastball. It's 0-1 to the Stags shortstop. Nomura hitting 302 on the year, two home runs, eight RBIs to his name. And Kuna's 0-1 is a little high and possibly a little outside. Count evens up at one and one. Well, no score still here in the top of the second inning. Dominic Kuna trying to work out of a little bit of trouble after walking the first man of the inning in Ethan Hibbard. Calm down nicely with two outs. The runner goes, and the throw down from Prieto. Second base side of the bag is no good, and into center field. Taking off for third base is Catalano. The throw from Teasy is much too short, and Catalano steals second base, advances to third on the overthrow, and just like that, Colin Nomura, an RBI opportunity for Fairfield with two away here in the second. Not a terrific throw from Diego Prieto out of the crouch. Tommy McAndrews obviously played in the first game, not behind the backstep, but Prieto, a junior, should know better than to throw that ball. Should have ate it and just let that runner go in that instance. Wasn't a bad throw by any means, and as we were saying at the other broadcast, it was a uh, the backstops that Fordham has are quite defensive specialists. Even the one, the one freshman they have in Carson Chavez, a very good defensive specialist as Nomura. He fouls that one out of play and will run. The count deuces wild now. It's two strikes, two balls, two outs, and one man on base. Number two, Luke Nomura is up, and he hits a fly ball out in the left center field. Who's going to call it? It looks like it's going to be Teasy. He camps underneath it, and that's the third out of the inning. Now after two, no runs, no hits, and one man left on base. We're still tied after one and a half. You're listening to Fordham Rams Baseball on WFUV Sports.
Hey everyone, Brian Raybax here, one of your New York Yankees beat reporters for WFUV Sports. Along with Lou Orlando and Will Talent, we've got you covered for live game coverage, post-game analysis, season updates, and just about everything you need to know about the Bronx Bombers. You can follow me on Twitter at Brian Raybacks and subscribe to our YouTube channel for special Yankee feature reports all season long. And welcome back to Houlihan Park as the Fordham Rams host the Fairfield Stags as part of the second game of this day-night doubleheader. Fordham victors in that first contest as Kean Saylor will lead things off for the Rams. And Colin, Kean Saylor batting cleanup in this contest as he should, batted fifth in that last one, but multi-hit games in his last four of five games and Colin, started the season 0 for 21, but why don't you let us know where he's at now? Well, entering today's doubleheader, Kean Saylor was 11 for his last 18. That's across four games. That's a 6-11 average, folks. Safe to say he's been swinging the bat nicely. And Alex and O'Deal and Miss Lowe, it's 1-0 to the Rams left fielder, who's on a horrid pace right now. Multi-hit games, as I said, in four of his last five games, including a base hit in last in the last contest earlier this morning, as that's a number right out in front of the plate. Alexson will field fire, and he'll get the quick sailor running down the first baseline. Good backup right there by Hibbard. And just like that, there is one away in the Fordham half of the second. That's not an easy play for any pitcher. I don't care if you're Greg Maddox out there. It's hard to come off the mound and try and field something like that cleanly. And it's very tough to gauge just how fast that ball is coming off the bat, how slow it's coming off the bat, and then how quickly you actually need to get there to catch the runner in time with the throw. And now here is an underrated performer from last time's contest against Army, and that's the first baseman, T.J. Wachter. Big six foot seven, 225 pound individual out of New Jersey. Attended high school at P27 Academy. He takes outside for a ball, 1 0. Alexson's 1 0 is cut on and missed. A heavy, loud hack there from Wachter. And count evens up. It's 1 and 1. No home runs for Wachter yet this season, but at his size, 6 7. You can only imagine what that moonshot would look like if he was able to run into one at the right time. Well, the, lo the ball is so loud off his bat, though, as he cuts on and misses right there. Count now one and two. But in that last game against Army, two lineouts and two singles, a very productive two for four day for the big first baseman, all four of which were nice barrels as Walker called strike three on the outside corner. Ben Allison, third punch out of the ball game, gets the big man looking. And and just like that, there are two away. Yeah, and typically you have to protect in that situation. That's not a pitch that you want a power hitter to take looking. You want him to swing the bat. If he lines out, he lines out. If he grounds out, he grounds out. But you want your power hitters to be free to swing the bat. And Coach Kevin Layton using a little bit of the depth in this second game. He will turn to Mike Taylor, the DH in game two. He takes the breaking ball right down the middle for strike one from Alexson. Michael Taylor, a junior from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Another breaking ball right there, but that one a little outside. Count evens up at one and one. And yes, Colin, another New Jersey native, Mike an attendee of Gill St. Bernard's High School. Infielder plays all around the diamond other than shortstop as another fastball grooved in there from Alexson on the outside corner doing a nice job mixing and matching but loving the outside corner. It's one and two to the veteran third baseman DH today. Upstairs and missed the count now. Even deuces wild on the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Alexson working quickly on the bump, changing speeds as well with his pitches. That's hard to keep up with as an opposing hitter. Favoring heavy to the left side of the rubber on his delivery is that slider. That one just leaks a little bit outside, and the count thickens now. It's 3-2 and two with freshman Madinako waiting in the wings. The 3-2. Two to the D.H. Taylor is low and inside ball four. Mike Taylor 
He draws the walk. It's a two-out base runner for the Rams. A two-out base runner indeed. A key opportunity for Fordham. Those are the gravy opportunities, if you will. They're not the ones that you expect to happen over the course of the game. When you're able to get a two-out base runner, those are the ones that you feel really good about being able to drive in if you're a team struggling offensively. And Fordham had a decent game on offense, but only four runs. You know they'd like to add that count in this second game. A called strike there up and away to the freshman second baseman, Madden Akko, a native of Los Angeles, California, actually attended the same high school as Giancarlo Stanton, New York Yankees slugger, and that is Notre Dame High School as Akko drives that one out in the left field. It's sinking, and it'll fall in front of Bucciero and left field going to third is Taylor, who is safe on the throw, and Akko advances to second base as well and just like that Colin second and third with two away the freshman doing big things and he just dropped it in front of the left fielder remember here at Hulahan Park that left field fence goes 338 feet it's deep well it was first pitch swing there for the freshman Madden Akko and he comes up big time his eighth hit of the contest batting a little over 250 now and here's Chris Gennaro two extra base hits in it in the contest against Army, including a home run and a double big opportunity here for the senior shortstop as that breaking ball is chopped on the ground and out of play. Third base side, it's 0-1. Gennaro hitting 220, has one home run. That came earlier today, as you mentioned. Six RBIs on the season for Gennaro as well. Two coming against Army. Had a fielder's choice ground ball that scored two runs, actually, as Gennaro serves that one out into right field. Going back on it is Bucciero. He's back, and he turns, jumping, and it falls. It falls for the double. Chris Gennaro, have yourself a day. In four at-bats today, Chris Gennaro has four runs batted in, including two massive runs here in the second inning Colin as the Rams they take the early two to nothing lead over the Stags an RBI double for Chris Gennaro what a day for Gennaro I'm not sure he's Irish but it's certainly his lucky day on St. Patrick's Day Will he's enjoyed every minute of it so far four RBIs between the two contests today for Chris Gennaro it'll be another double there no error charged on the scoreboard. That was Matt Bucciero out in right field, unable to come up with that one. Definitely fighting some sun as it's setting behind Keaton Hall around this time of day. First pitch to Diego Prieto was a ball. Backstop in now for Tommy McAndrews who started that first game and Prieto Low hands on that one. Another breaking ball. This one finds the outer half of the plate. Evens up the count at one and one. And Prieto know more for his defensive prowess than his ability to swing the bat. You'd, you'd like to see him be able to develop that offensive ability this season. Cut on and missed. Foul ball. Excuse me, not missed, but fouled and out of play into the parking lot. It's one and two. And you're absolutely right, Colin. Diego much more known for his defensive presence behind the plate, only committing two errors, two of which that came this season in his three-year collegiate career thus far. The one-two to Prieto is outside. Nice stop there by Hibbard, preventing any advancement over there at second base for Gennaro, and the count will even up once again. It's deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs, two-nothing for him in the second. And now if you're Alexson, you have to challenge. This is the number nine hitter. You challenge him with a fastball. Ben Alexson with two, three strikeouts already. Swung on and missed. An ugly looking slider right there, but good enough for Ben Alexson. Gets Prietro to swing and miss on that one. Fourth strikeout for the Vermont native to start his ball game. However, two runs on one hit and one man left on base for the Rams. They will take the 2-0 lead over Fairfield in this afternoon version of the doubleheader. It's Fordham Baseball on WFUV Sports.
Hey everyone, I'm Chris Percy Einan. And I'm Will Grant. And we're two of the hosts for WFUV's very own basketball podcast, Pick and Pod. Tune in weekly for updates on our takes of the latest around the NBA and exclusive insight from our very own Knicks and Nets beat reporters. We'll have you covered on everything from all of the NBA's latest drama we know and love to debating all year long which team will get to lift that golden Larry O'Brien in June. Don't miss a beat from the hardwood on WFUV's Pick and Pod. Another gorgeous day for Fordham Baseball here at Houlihan Park. Fordham looking to sweep the day-night doubleheader after taking a 2 to nothing lead in the bottom half of the second, Colin. Here we are, top half of the third. Dominic Kuna doing an excellent job as he enters his second time through the order. But Matanako, nice little single that turned in to a two RBI double for Christian Arrow and the Rams out in front early two nothing. And remember that runner came with two outs, Will. As I mentioned earlier, those are the runs that you don't always expect to get, but when you can drive in guys with two away in an inning, you're feeling good about how your ball club is playing. And here's a little flash from the past. It's Zach Selinger, the Fordham, the Forum former, there it is, Fordham Ram transfer for his graduate year up to Fairfield played all four years in 148 games for the Fordham Rams. 133 of those he started, tallied 138 hits in the maroon. And there's another hit as it's soft served out into right field at a base hit. In his familiar territory, Selinger is on with a leadoff single. And Selinger needed that prior to that A.B. He was hitting 105 on the season, so perhaps he missed the Bronx more than he was willing to let on. Well, it's definitely a place where he thrived the most. 17 home runs and 86 runs. Great career as a Fordham Ram batting 289. And he'll lead off a first, and it's Tyler Kipp. Taking a strike there, the designated hitter for the Stags with the leadoff base runner. It's 0-1 from Dominic Kuna in his third inning of work and now entering his second time through the order. Kuna's 0-1, drops in there for a strike. Franco loved it, so Kuna's going to love it. It's 0-2. It was a good off-speed pitch that time from Kuna, but he's got to be careful with where he chooses to drop that in. The right type of hitter will line that pitch up and crack it might be able to get away with it while you're facing the bottom of the order, but once you get a little higher up, could be a different story as the 0-2 is cut on and miss. A great four-seam fastball in the outer half got Kip reaching for that one and another strikeout for Kuna. It's his second of the day, and that'll bring the leadoff man, Ryan Stolo, the center fielder for his second crack. So fly out to center field his first time up. Buciero shading, playing even with the base, playing for that bunt. The 0-0 is going to be 1-0 as Prieto tried to frame that one, bring it back in and steal a strike from Chris Franco, the home plate umpire for this contest. And Kuna getting his sign, a large lead off of first for Selinger. Stolo ready. Delayed steal from Selinger, and once again, the throw Bounces into center field, but a good backup there from Akko. Base runners having their way with Prieto now. Colin, it's men on second with one out. But Ryan Stolo could make it a one-run ball game with a runner in scoring position. And that was a much better throw than the first time he had come out of the crouch on that earlier attempt to catch a man stealing. But still, you have to be more fine-tooth comb with how you choose to throw that ball. Couldn't agree more there, Colin. It was a delayed steal, something that Selinger may have picked up here at Fordham. Definitely saw him do that a lot as the count thickens now to Stolo. It's one and two. Kuna out of the stretch. Gennaro holding Selinger on very loosely over there at shortstop. In a little inside move, nothing but a bluff just to keep Selinger honest over there at second base. Got to control the run game. As some would say, don't want that run to score, especially... It's been an issue with the Rams, letting runs score after they've already scored some. But Kuna, the 1-2 to Stolo, 
is served out in the center field. Teasy's going to camp underneath it, need a strong throw, and here it is. He's going to throw it through all the way. It's a one-hopper to Bucciero, but much too short on that throw. Good effort nonetheless. Selinger will sack, will take the sack fly, will advance on the sack fly. Good baseball there for the Stags, but two away now for the third baseman, Dean Ferrara. And you hit the nail on the head. That is intelligent baseball. Good awareness by the base runner to advance on a deep fly ball to center field. Strollo, not known to walk, only seven walks this year. Once you know he's swinging, you're looking to advance on a fly ball. Well, it was a sacrifice fly and a base hit there for Ferrara, the hitting machine batting over 350. It's an RBI base hit for the third baseman for Fairfield. Dean Ferrara drives in the RBI and makes it a 2-1 to -one ball game. Nothing too fancy there. Just hit the ball right back to where it came from over the middle, Will, and that'll get you a high batting average in a hurry. Ferrara, not a ton of runs driven in this year, just his ninth, but when you bat second, you really just want those hits. That, it, that hit 26th on the season for Dean Ferrara, second in the team lead for the hit category. And Kuna just looking to settle in now, still pitching with the lead. Ferrara, good lead off of first, and that's a line drive base hit. That'll get down the left field line, and Sailor's going to have to cut that one off. Ferrara will advance to third. The throw in is not in time. Almost had Matt Bergevin on that one, but it's a two-out double for the Stags first baseman and Colin. It's second and third with one of the best hitters in the MAC conference stepping up to the plate. This is a big momentum opportunity for Fairfield. A base now here would most assuredly give them a three to two lead. Fordham just trying to cling to that two to one lead at the moment and get out of this top of the third inning. Well, it'll be Ethan Hibbard to step up now. And as you said, Colin, a three homer game yesterday for Hibbard trying to add some more damage here as he takes ball here, one and oh to the veteran backstop, Kuna. Just trying to get out of some trouble here. It's second and third, 2-1 Rams lead, and there's a strike grooved in on the inner half of the plate. It'll be evened up now at one and one. And they're shifted towards the left side. If Hibbert just shoots something to the right side of the infield, the only one over there at the moment is Wachter. It's a heavy pull shift on Hibbert, and that one inside, so obviously pitching to the defense here, and. Hibbard going to have to do what he does to get a pitch that he can drive. Wide open hold there. Madden Akko standing even with second base and now drifting over to the shortstop side of second base. A huge shift. Hibbard really just needs to stick his barrel out there and could tie this game up if he can leg one out. It's Ferrara off of third. Bergevin off of second. Hibbard the batter. Kuna still pitching, trying to get out of this top half of the third and that one's flied into right field underneath it will be no it sails out Andrew Canellis I was I was all the way thought that one was staying in and Canellis just kept drifting to the left and here it is Colin a three run home run for Ethan Hibbard he picks up right where he left off and I'm I'm an in honest shock right now, Colin. The wind really took that one, and a home run for Hibbard. It's 4-2 just like that. I can't say as though I blame you, Will. That's Hibbard's ninth home run of the year, and the Houlihan Park wind was particularly kind to the Stags that time. Hibbard didn't get the best piece of contact on that ball, but kind of just muscled it out over the right field wall. It definitely seemed as though he got it off the end of the bat. Andrew Canellis was gauging it as though it was staying, but that wind, like we were saying earlier in our first broadcast, going to be a factor, and it continues to be a factor here in game two as Kuna serves up the three-run shot. He'll face Matt Bucciero now for the second time with an even count of one and one, just trying to stop the bleeding now just a bit. Kuna up to 44 pitches. This is the time in the ball game where you have to attack. You cannot let that pitch count continue to bubble up on you. And there's a strike now. Going to make it one and two to the sophomore right fielder as we see some action in the Fordham bullpen. Kuna, he's set. 
The one-two to Buchiero is served out into right field. That's going to dunk in for a base hit. Once again, some two-out magic here for the Stags. That's their fourth consecutive hit with two outs now, and that'll bring up the left fielder, Paul Catalano. Will, I know you enjoy postseason baseball. Very much so. I'm an avid fan, <laughs> Whenever actually. there's two outs in a ball game, fans are on their feet because they understand that that is one of the most critical moments of the ball game in any given inning, whether it be the first inning or the ninth inning. When there's two outs, it's momentum. Momentum can swing one way or the other in that moment. Right now, Fairfield doing all that they can in two out situations, and it's paying off for them. Fairfield doing absolutely everything they can in two out situations. The common phrase, a bloop, a blast. In this instance, it was two bloops, a major blast, and we'll start it with another bloop here. So Fairfield doing what they need to do to score runs at a premium. And the relief pitcher now is Kai Rayum. Six and two-thirds innings pitched this year. Ten hits, six strikeouts, a 9-4-5 ERA. But excellent stuff. Great bite on his slider and a mid-80s fastball that can reach up to 87 miles an hour, Colin. And it seems as though Fordham is now embracing the idea that this could become a bullpen type of game in a hurry. Rayum, 5'11", 190 pounds, a senior before Fordham was a transfer student. Came by way of the University of Nebraska, Omaha. So it's been around baseball in different places. Definitely a difference between how baseball is played at a place like Nebraska and how it's played here at Fordham. Much more of a cold weather environment here at Fordham Rose Hill. But Nebraska can get windy at times, too. It can get gusty over there at times. Omaha, home of the College World Series, one of the most underrated events in college sports. It really is. It's such a fun event to be at, a fun event to see. It's high adrenaline baseball in the middle of the season and definitely in the cornfields of Nebraska, it can get a little dicey. You know what I mean, <laughs> The cornfields of Nebraska. With baseball. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> we, we, we love a reference here. We love a baseball Gotta go movie, movie reference, reference here. We Gotta love go it. movie, even though that was Iowa. I have my geography <laughs> all out of sorts right now somewhere but in the middle of the country it's where somewhere where the where the cornfields are of high abundance um kai rayum coming from nebraska but here we are now kai rayum with kind of a tough task here got to get some outs and you know aiden dowd freshman started in the game against army kind of saved that fordham bullpen only had to use brady gannon and Connor Haywood, so Coach Kevin Layton does have a plethora of arms to go to, but obviously you don't really want to have to break it open in the third inning, going to have to adapt and overcome. Paul Catalano, the left fielder, who will take his second, cracks at it now, reached on a fielder's choice and stole a base back in the second inning, looking to increase the Stags lead. It's 4-2, to two, and the runner takes off from second. Prieto's throw is in time. A nice throw there by Diego Prieto. And it's a caught stealing for Bucciero. The 2-6 to six put out, and that'll end the threat. Kai Rayum will open the frame in the fourth with a fresh count. But however... Let's do some math here, Colin. Five hits, four runs scored, and nobody left on base. No errors for that matter as well. However, Fairfield, they take the 4-2 to two advantage here at Houlihan Park Fordham, trying to sweep the day-night doubleheader in the Bronx. You are listening to Fordham Baseball on WFUV Sports. How's it going, everybody? I'm Lou Orlando. And I'm Colin Loughran. And we're two of your main hosts for WFB Sports' NHL podcast, Five on Three. We'll keep you updated on the Rangers, Islanders, Devils, and, of course, the Stanley Cup Final. Home ice for all things NHL, Five on Three. And welcome back to Houlihan Park here in the Bronx, the Rose Hill campus of Fordham University. It's a 4-2 lead for Fair Fairfield University, however, making the trip up from Fairfield, Connecticut, 
down to the Bronx. And it's Ben Allickson still out there pitching very well, and he'll pitch his frame of the third inning. It'll be Ryan Teasy. To lead things off for the Rams, the right guy to do it. A strikeout victim back in the first inning, though, but two hits in that contest against Army earlier this morning. Interesting shift here, third base playing even. That's Dean Ferrara playing that bunt as Teasy. He'll foul one first base side out of play. It's quickly 0-1. And, and Teasy is exactly the guy you want leading off this inning if you're Fordham, precisely because he has the understanding that you're not going to get it all back at once, right? You're not going to get two runs back all at one time. Get on base, see what you can do from there as a team. And that's what he does best, Colin. He never really gets you all back in the game with one swing of the bat. He can hit one out if need be, but he's really contact. I'll steal you the bases. You drive me in kind of guy, and I'll play great defense as here we are. There's a base hit for Ryan Teasy, his third hit of the day, first of this game, and a heavy base-stealing threat on base early for the Fordham Rams as Daniel Bucciero, a big power threat, will step in now. And you hit on it there. With Bucciero being the power threat he is, it gives Coach Layton and company some flexibility on the base pads in terms of what you would like to do with TZ here as well. Well, Daniel Bucciero, 18 games started, 19 games played now, and 19 games started, batting 282 as he lines that one. That's deep over the head. And not over the head, as I spoke a little too soon, as that's reeled in there by Catalano. Definitely looked like it had the barrel on it. But once again, Colin, the wind playing a big factor. Balls are tailing from left to right. That one just kind of hung up a little too much. But Bucciero, heavy pull side hitter, a good barrel nonetheless. And the dimensions of Houlihan Park not helping Bucciero in that case. Had he been a lefty and pulled it towards right field, that's probably a home run. It's probably tying this game up absolutely as Andrew Canellis, Fordham leader in home runs this season. He takes a strike on the outside corner. It's 0-1. Teasy off of first base. Four stolen bases for the senior this year as Canellis lines one into the gap. That'll get Teasy to third base seamlessly. And just like that, it's runners on the corners. Andrew Canellis, another base hit for the graduate out of Vassar. Good piece of hitting from Canellis, not trying to do too much, not trying to crush the baseball. That was a case of see ball, hit ball. Perfect guy to have up in this opportunity right now, and that's Kean Saylor, the left fielder, batting over 280 and base hit in last game, last game's contest against Army. A little number ground ball back in the second, but here we are in the bottom of the third. He just... Needs a little contact to the right side. Could result in a run with the speed that Fordham has all the way around on the base paths, especially with Kean batting right now, a speedster in his own regard. And, of course, you would love a base hit, a home run, an extra base hit, but a fly ball gets you one run. It gets the job done at this given moment, trims the lead to one. Beauty of the sack fly make the deficit a one-run ball game. That should be the minimum requirement here. As the throw over to first base, Alexson will keep tabs on Canellis, who is running, and Sailor deep into right field, but coming and shading over is Bucciero. A strike thrown from, that, from the right fielder, but cut off by the first baseman, Bergevin. Teasy scores easily, easily, and there you go, Colin. A good old sacrifice fly never hurt anybody. It actually usually always helps, and just like that, it's a four to three Stags advantage now. Most selfless way, or one of the most selfless ways, you can get an RBI on your stat line. The good old RBI sack fly for them within one run now. Well, Ryan Teasy scores on the sack fly. Andrew Canellis stays put at first, and that'll bring up T.J. Watker, who takes a big body swing at that one, and it's 0-1. Watker swings pretty viciously all the time as that fastball just misses off the outside corner there, evens up the count. And one and one. And don't you want T.J. Walker swinging viciously whenever he's up at bat because you know he runs into on that ball is going a long way, Will. Makes a lot of loud contact off of his barrel. Absolutely, Colin. 
And Canellis will take off from first, but a little flare out to the shortstop Namura, and that will end the threat. However, the Fordham Rams, they pull within run two hits, one run, no errors, and one man left on base. It's 4-3 to three now, Fairfield, as Kai Raoum will take over things once again on the mound for the Rams. You are listening to Fordham Baseball on WFUV Sports. What's going on, guys? I'm Jack Warner, one of your New York Rangers beat reporters for the 2023-2024 NHL season. I'll have you covered all season long as New York looks to bring a Stanley Cup back to the Big Apple in Peter Laviolette's first season as head coach. Follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore Warner 23 for live game updates, post-game media availability, and all things Blue Shirts. Will Talent with you alongside me is Colin Lochran and another good brand of baseball that the, these Fordham Rams are playing today. It's 4-3, to three, though, in this second contest as the visiting Fairfield Stags hold on to the slim back-and-forth lead that we've seen so far in this game, too. Fordham winners first time out trying to sweep the second game of this day-night doubleheader, Colin. But in that last time out in the bottom of the third, the Rams... Got a run to score. Ryan Teasy, he scores. Andrew Canellis, a little bit of life from that offense in the third. And listen, if you're Fordham, you did your job in the bottom of the third inning. It's always nice to have the big inning, four runs, five runs, three runs, whatever it may be. But sometimes you just need one. And in this type of game, now you're only down by one run. Keep putting together innings like that where you play productive baseball. And I guarantee you like where you are by the end of this ball game. Also importantly, they're going to need some length out of the bullpen from Kai Ram. They want to conserve as much of their bullpen as humanly possible so they can get their best relievers in the game for those high leverage situations. Well, a little bit more on Kai Raum here. Five pitch mix here for the right handed transfer student. Fastball, changeup, slider, curveball, cutter. You'll see him throw that fastball and cutter combination as well as that curveball most frequently, but. Lots to work with, and definitely five pitches he can utilize to get outs. The 0-0 from Rayum to Paul Catalano, who get a new fresh count. He takes the fastball up and away. It's 1-0 to start the fourth frame. Catalano 0 for 1 today. He's hitting 265 on the season. Cut on and mid fouled back towards the screen. Even up the count, 1-1. One and one. Kai gets ahead a lot of the time. Over 60% first pitch strikes when he throws that fastball, and there's a little number off the bat of Catalano right back to Rayum, who flips over to Watker at first, and just like that, there's a quick first out. Rayum very swift off the mound. Really, many of Fordham's pitchers have that ability to field well off the mound. It's such a fundamental skill to have, but very important, especially in games like this where there is an abundance of scoring early. Fordham with a lot of athletic pitchers just in general. A lot of athletic pitchers on this year's roster as the shortstop for Fairfield will step in. Now it's Luke Namura. He takes outside for ball one. Namura a fly out to center field in his first trip. He made some great defensive plays so far in this matchup. That one's upstairs, and Heim just misses in the count 2-0. and oh. Raum out of the stretch. Normal defensive alignment for the Rams as that fastball is grooved on the outside half there for a strike. It's 2-1. and one. That's absolute cake. That's where you want that fastball nine times out of ten. Keep it out of arm's reach from a hitter. Anything more towards the heart of the play is the trouble zone. Rayum's 2-1 outside corner once again doing a great job of finding that one. Nomura wants no part of it. So it's two balls and two strikes to the Fairfield shortstop. One away 
four to three. The Stags lead the Rams here on this beautiful St. Patrick's Sunday. Rayum's 2-2 is cut on and missed. Strike three. Excellent breaking ball there by Kai Rayum. And he tallies his first strikeout of his outing. And just like that, Colin, there are two away as the former Fordham Ram, Zach Selinger, will take his second crack at it now. Selinger, a base hit and a run scored. Also a stolen base in his first trip up to the plate today. Breaking ball, maybe a cutter. Can't really tell, but nevertheless, a ball inside. It was a backdoor breaking ball. I love that pitch, especially to Zellinger, who crowds the plate tremendously. Another great backdoor breaking ball right there, and that one looked more like the cutter. And that one falls in for a strike. Count even now. It's one and one. Ram moving a little bit east-west on Selinger, keeping him inside. Doesn't want him to get extended on anything. Slider, that one misses outside and low count two and one to the former Fordham product. Still with that same stance. Leaks over the batter's box right there. Really does not give the pitcher any room to work with as well as keeping those hands a little low. And of course, choked up on the bat as Rayum fires in a four-seamer on the outside half for strike two. Deuces wild once again. It's two balls, two strikes, two outs, and Rayum deals. Ball low and away. The count will thicken now. It's three and two to Zach Selinger. Yeah, Ram trying to clip the low outside corner there. Missed it by a little bit, but you like the way he's thinking. You don't want to give Selinger anything over the heart of the plate. Even though he's hitting 150, he has big power. And there's the breaking ball just missed off the inside part of the plate. Home plate umpire Rich Franco didn't want to pull the string on that one. Zach Selinger having a great day in one of his returns to the Bronx as he is still one for one. And this time he reaches with a two out walk. Now bring up the designated hitter now, Tyler Kipp. Sacrifice fly back in the third inning of this one. Good lead off of first for Selinger. Not the fastest of ball players, but a great base runner nonetheless was known for that here at Fordham during his time. Now in graduate school, Kip takes outside from Rayum. It's 1-0 with two away. That win now, Colin, too. It really looks as though it's picking up mightily. And there's another ball. From Rayum trying to find the strike zone now with two away in the fourth inning. Having a little bit of, of a tough time. No movement over in the Fordham bullpen and nothing down in the Fairfield side of things. Ben Alexson throwing quite the game. And there's a little number over there to Gennaro who fields off of his back foot and throws over to Watker pretty seamlessly and effortlessly for the third out score at 6-3. to three. However, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Kai Rayum pitches a scoreless fourth frame for the Fordham Rams. The Stags, they lead this one 4-3 to three over the Rams as we head to another commercial break here at Houlihan Park. You are listening to Fordham Rams Baseball on WFUV Sports. Hey guys, it's Nick Palmer, your New York Islanders beat reporter for the 2023-2024 NHL season. Tune into my Twitter at NickPalmer55 for live game updates in addition to pre- and post-game analysis. To get updates on all things Isles, follow me as the Blue and Orange try to bring another Stanley Cup championship to Long Island. And welcome back to the Houlihan Park contest between the Fordham Rams and the Fairfield Stags. We just we just overheard in the press box the Duquesne Dukes, your A-10 champions of men's basketball. They head to March Madness, the first time winning 
They're heading to March Madness since 1977. Wow, Colin, long time ago, the Duquesne Dukes, excellent season. And you, along that ride, you got to go out there to Pittsburgh to cover that game and be the color commentator as we are here back in the bottom of the fourth inning as Mike Taylor steps in and grounds one over to shortstop. And just like that, Nomura, one pitch, one away. Taylor is set down. Taylor with the first pitch aggression there, taking a swing, just couldn't get a really good piece of it. To your point on Duquesne, though, they are a fun and frisky squad. Jake DeMichael, a walk-on freshman, has made a big difference for them in terms of spacing on the court. They'll be a force to be reckoned with in the NCAA tournament. March is crazy. Anything can happen at any given moment, Will. And how about that A-10 strutting out at least two more teams to March Madness, including the Duquesne Dukes and obviously one of the nation's best, Dayton Flyers. So another two-team year bid for the Atlantic 10 Conference in March Madness. As stepping in now is the freshman, Madden Akko, the second baseman. He takes low. The count even now, one and one. Akko, a little looping base hit into left field. His last time up, but a base hit nonetheless as he takes high and away there on that breaking ball. Alexson still in there pitching for the Stags. It's two and one. Yeah, Akko just kind of dropped that last base hit in. Didn't hit it extremely hard, but hit it where they weren't, if you will. And there's Akko down the line, and it's a foul ball just outside of the third base bag there. Tim Carey, home, home plate umpire of last game's festivities, calls that one fair. It's the correct call, and it'll be another even count now at 2-2 two and two for the freshman out of Los Angeles. And Alexson putting together a nice game. Hasn't been perfect. Gave up the two spot in the bottom of the second. Gave up a run in the bottom of the third. So far off to a good start. A check swing right there, but nonetheless, it does not matter. Home plate umpire Rich Franco rings up Akko looking, and that is the fifth strikeout of the ball game for Ben Alexson, his second looking. A nice slider right there, and Colin, there are two away now in the bottom of the fourth inning with Chris Gennaro. Three extra base hits to his name on the day. And with the way Christian Arrow has been playing today on the hole, you got to think there's a chance he could loop one out of here, crack one out of here, use whatever power word you want to say out of here. How about wallop? There I like you wallop, go. and that foul ball is definitely not walloped, but rather skewed. You can go skewed. I don't know. It's kind of off the middle of the bat there, a little knob of the bat action as... Gennaro down 0-2, two outs, 4-3. The Stags lead. Gennaro is having himself a day as that is a looping base hit out into right field. Chris Gennaro, two for two in this contest and four for four overall with four RBIs on the, the doubleheader. He's been seeing the ball really well Kinda at like the play a beach today. Ball. It's, uh, it must be, and vision is such a great strength, and it comes and goes for a lot of hitters at this level to get it to be consistently great. That's the challenge. Well, Chris Gennaro, we were saying it in the last broadcast, but he's really coming to his own as a senior, hitting over 500 against breaking balls throughout his collegiate career, just a testament to what he truly does, what he offers as a hitter, and not only what he offers, but the road and the journey it took for him to get there as this complete hitter and one of the bona fide leaders on and off the field for this Fordham Rams squad as Diego Prieto fouls off the first offering from Alexson out of play. It's 0-1, and, and the 0-1 is inside. Count evens at 1-1. One and one. Remember, in that first game, Gennaro was the 9-hitter, only the 8-hitter in this game. If you can get production out of your 8-9 and nine hitters consistently, you're going to be a scary team come conference time. It's always the best thing, especially with the kind of names that Fordham struts out to top their lineup with TZ, Bucciero, Canellis. The list goes on and on with how they've been playing, and that's a heavy swing and a miss there from Diego. And the catcher, the Fordham backstop, now down in the hole. It's one and two. Prieto has to protect here. You don't want to go down on strikes. Just look to fight off whatever tough pitch Alex may throw at you. 
Ben Alexson through three and two thirds innings of work now. Just about an hour and five minutes or so through this contest as Prieto cuts on and misses. Pumped in that fastball is Alexson and he records his sixth strikeout of the contest today. And just like that, the Rams, they go down in order. After four innings of play here at Houlihan Park, it's 4-3 to three Fairfield over Fordham. You are listening to Fordham Baseball on WFUV Sports. Hi, this is Mike Green, WFUV class of 1983. WFUV is the flagship station of Fordham Athletics with live coverage of Fordham football, Fordham men's and women's basketball, in addition to Saturday one-on-one. -on -one. Stay right here on 90.7 FM for all things WFUV sports. And we are back here in the Bronx at Houlihan Park. It's a 4-3 to three Fairfield lead over Fordham as Ryan Strollo, the leadoff man, will lead things off for Fairfield in their half of the fifth inning. But Colin, once again, maybe not like in the Army game, but I would say this is quite the pitcher's doubleheader. It's definitely favoring the pitchers. The offenses have had to grind for the runs they've gotten. Even the home run wasn't a no-doubter on the part of Fairfield. It was a muscle-out kind of home run. Hibbard's hit some no-doubters over the course of his time at Fairfield, but that one was benefited greatly by the wind in play here in Houlihan Park, as well as his sheer strength. Just his natural strength got it off the end of the bat, and Canellis kind of just... Kept going, going, going. Looked like he was going to coast underneath that one pretty effortlessly and it just kind of effortlessly carried over the wall, so to say. So it's now a 4-3 to three game. We leave you here in the top of the fifth inning. Ryan Strollo will lead things off against Kai Rayum. And Strollo, he bluffs a bunt attempt and leaves it for a ball. Count 1-0 and oh to the Stag center fielder. Strollo 0 for 2 today. No walks, no strikeouts. And he hits one off the end of the bat. Teasy coming in on it, and he lays out, and it hits the ground. It's a base hit. The throw into second base will get past the shortstop, Gennaro. And once again, the wind definitely playing a big factor. Pulls that one in, makes Teasy charge in a lot quicker than normally. Gets just past him, and it'll be a leadoff double for the Stags' leadoff man. And that's a tough read if you're Teasy because you don't want to necessarily let it fall right in front of you if you feel like you can make the play. But on the flip side, if you dive and you don't get it, you run the risk of having happen what exactly happened there with the runner advancing the second. And that'll bring in the definitely offensive threat in Dean Ferrara now batting over 356 with 17 runs scored just one home run and nine RBIs on the year but one of those RBIs coming in the third inning an RBI base hit with two outs to make it a two to one ball game Ferrara the chance to do something else here and add another RBI as he bluffs bunt pulls back but nevertheless it is a strike the count one and one you begin to wonder if Fairfield would even consider bunting here no outs. They're going to try and nickel and dime Fordham that much to where they're just trying to get one run here, one run there, and eventually get their way to victory. Well, you definitely could, Colin, especially with the big boppers following Ferrara, who skies one. First base side, Walker looks like he's going to take care of that one. And he'll be tagging up from third base. The throw from Walker is not in time. Great heads up baseball there from Stolo. T.J. Walker doing everything he can to make that play over the shoulder, but Stolo using his speed to take advantage 
and Ferrara. The productive out, it ends up being a sacrifice fly, and here comes Matt Bergevin. And Walker, not a fabulous defensive first baseman by any stretch. It's definitely more of his bat that you think about when you do consider the type of player he is. That time you have to be a little bit quicker in getting the ball back in towards the infield, especially considering how far he drifted away from the first base bag. Well, here comes the slugger, Matt Bergevin, batting 338 on the year with seven home runs and 20 RBIs. And, of course, that RBI double, or excuse me, was not an RBI double, but it was a double nonetheless earlier in this game back in the third inning with a chance to add another. And, Colin, it's another situation where a fly ball would just do the trick. The 1-0 is taken for a strike. Home plate umpire Rich Franco is going to say that he went on the swing there. So Bergevin, count one and one. Fordham playing in. T.J. Wachter playing heavy off of the line there. Almost right in the second base line for Madden Ako. And that one will be a strike. Rich Franco a little bit more favorable than Tim Carey with those upper end of the zone strikes but also Matt Bergevin a tall individual standing at six foot three it's a one and two count to the big first baseman for Fairfield Kai Rayum in the stretch leading off of third is Stolo and the one two is a number back to Gennaro he'll check Stolo at third over to first and that's great baseball a little check me throw him out the six three put out and there's two away, still just a one-run ball game, Colin. And that was a batter that you had to get out if you are Rayum because now the big bopper comes up. Ethan Hibbard had the three-run home run earlier, obviously, and with him, a fly out is a success. So if you take away the possibility of the sack fly here, this is another batter you have to get out, but the op options in which you could get him out with are enhanced. Well, here comes Hibbard, and the 0-0, from Rayum is a dazzling slider right on the outer portion of the plate right there. Hibbert obviously not going to swing at that one. Oh, oh, but you got to be careful here. K Kai Rayum, great job against the heavy contact hitters in Ferrara and Bergevin, but now the all around hitter, Ethan Hibbert. The last test here as he floats in yet another breaking ball. That time the curveball, not as much bite as the slider, but nevertheless, a strike is a strike. 0 oh, and 2 count. Rayum can go anywhere with this one, Colin. And now you have pitches to work with, as you mentioned. You don't have to throw a fastball. You don't even have to throw a competitive strike here. You could see if you could get Hibbert to chase something. And I definitely would not throw a competitive strike. Absolutely not. You're going to have to make Prieto block for this one. Get Hibbert to chase. Do something. Keep it out of the zone. No contact on this pitch. That'll do right there. That one misses. It's a good idea in the count. It's a fastball that misses at the eyes. It's a great place to miss. It's a one and two count now to Hibbard. Four to three lead for the Fairfield Stags. Ryan Stolo, the center fielder, leads off of third. Kai Rayum, the pitcher. A one two count to Hibbard. And it's a ground ball off the glove of Rayum. He'll be involved in the play. It's a backhand throw from Akko, but. To no avail, it's going to end up being a base hit, scored a 1-4-3 base hit. An infield single for Hibbard, who continues his perfect day. Now two for two, Colin, a single and four of the Stags' five RBIs today. And it hit off of Ram. Had it not clipped him on the mound, that's probably an out. You'd like to think the shortstop would be able to get the ball to Wachter in time. It's going to bring up Matt Bucciaro, twin brother of third baseman for Fordham, Daniel Bucciaro, as that one is up and inside for a ball. The count 1-0. and Fairfield increasing their lead with two outs. Now it's 5-3 to three on the infield single from Ethan Hibbard. Ryan Strollo, he scored on the play. Bucciaro will take a strike on the outside corner there. The count evens at 1-1. One and one. Ram's done a really nice job of peppering the outside part of the zone. He's not giving the hitters too much to work with over the heart of the plate. Also not squeezing them too far inside. He's made a concerted effort to live on the outer half. 
And we're gonna have to make a big pitch here with the big batter in Bucciaro standing in the wings. Is that one on the inside corner for a strike? Bucciaro didn't like it, but I love it, Colin. That's the backdoor cutter, and a great pitch from Rayum evens up the count. Or, I'm sorry, puts the count at one and two, a pitcher's count for Rayum. Through McCutter, now you have some options as well. You could go back to something supremely off-speed, or you could challenge him with a cutter again here if you wanted to. Just a little check over at first base for Hibbard. Got to keep him on his toes, keep the base runner honest. Rayum on the mound, one and two the count, one ball. Two strikes, two outs to Matt Bucciaro. Ethan Hibbard leading off of first. A 5-3 to three lead for Fairfield here in the top half of the fifth as Rayum he'll fire back over to first base. Once again, maybe just resetting now. Maybe not keeping Hibbard as honest as we see some more action over in the Fordham bullpen. Kai Rayum. Out of the stretch, Hibbert a decent lead off of first. Bucciaro the hitter. The 1-2 is low for a ball. Count will even up. It's deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, and two away. Now it becomes a question of how aggressive do you want to be if you're Ram. He's at 31 pitches in a relief appearance. Typically, if a starter's there, you have let him be aggressive. But here with Ram, you wonder. The 2-2. Two -two. Upstairs couldn't quite finish with that breaking ball, and the count will thicken up at 3-2. Bucciaro doing a great job of getting the count all the way to where he needs it to be. That'll put Hibbert in motion with two outs, so got to keep that in mind. A base hit with Hibbert's speed over at first could result in a run, depending on where Bucciaro places this one. The full count offering is ripped foul. First base side out of play and over by the Fordham dugout. We'll do it again. Full count, three and two. Hibbert, a speedy player, perhaps not a speed demon at first base, though, Will. You'd have to figure Bucciera would need to put one in the gap to get him home or put one over the wall, of course. Rayum set the 3-2. Once again, fouled off by Bucciero. One heck of an at-bat for the sophomore outfielder. Today, starting in right field for the Stags. And we will do it once again at 3-2. Three, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Rayum's ready. Bucciero's ready. Hibbert, a big lead off of first. He takes off. And there is ball four. Two, two out base runners now for the Stags. Rayum, the leadoff, or excuse me, the RBI two out single. And now a walk to Bucciero. Colin thickens things up a little bit with Catalano stepping up to the plate now. And how quickly an inning can change, Will. Just a couple of moments ago, we were talking about Fordham escaping this inning cleanly. Now, not the case. Fairfield extended their lead. They're up 5-3, and Fordham's got the bullpen cooking. Someone is up and working at the moment. Well, Paul Catalano 0 for 2 today. Rounded back to the pitcher his last time out when he was facing Kai Rayum. And he will take, he being Catalano, will take that one outside for a ball. It's 1 and 0. Throw into center field. Rayum trying to pick off. Hibbard at second base, but that will end up advancing both Hibbard and Bucciero. The errant throw scored an E1 out of the reach of Chris Gennaro at shortstop. And Kai Rayum kind of hurting himself here. Now runners in scoring position with two away. And that was not a necessary throw over by any stretch of the imagination. Now you do have a base to work with here, but it's a matter of if you're willing to load up the bases or not. And Catalano has not seen any success today. So that could change in the blink of an eye, batting 257 with eight runs and one hit, six RBIs to number 10's name on this season. It's one and one to the Stags left fielder as he fouls that one right back at us and off to off the screen. The count will even up now at two and two. And now you have to attack. You're at the point in the game where you cannot pick around this guy. You have to throw him something competitive, Will. Count is one and two. My 
correction. Now it is two and two. Ball outside. Rayum throwing a lot of pitches in this inning. 39 in total in his inning in two thirds that he's worked so far. Just trying to stop the bleeding a little bit. Keep this game within striking distance. The 2-2 is served back up the middle. That'll be a base hit scoring easily is Hibbard. And trailing him easily is Bucciero. It's a two RBI single with two away in the top of the fifth for Paul Catalano. A two out, two RBI single and a much needed RBI single at that, Colin. As the lead now, seven to three, head coach Kevin Layton. He looks like he's gonna make a change. Yeah, it appears as though that's going to be the last we see of Kai Ram this afternoon. Didn't do a terrible job, just couldn't make critical pitches at the right spot. That last pitch being one of them. He had to attack there, just couldn't blow it by the hitter. Well, did a great job to limit the damage early on in the inning, especially giving up the leadoff double to Stolo. The pop out over to Watker and then a ground ball, and then after that, all with two outs, a single, a walk, and a, another single that has yielded two runs for the Stags, making it seven to three. And as we can get you the pitcher now, 30, it'll be number 30, Nate Scott, on the mound for the Fordham Rams, the third pitcher in this contest. Nate Scott, a senior, 5'10", 190 pounds. He's been a staple here at Fordham since last season, made 23 appearances in his first year with the Rams. All of them out of the bullpen, had a two and two record and a save to go with a 10.05 ERA. And that ERA not indicative of just the amount of times that Fordham turned to Nate Scott to provide something for them out of the bullpen. He can provide some length. He can come in with runners in scoring position or runners on base in general. Fordham would like to get some length out of him this afternoon. Well, now it is not final, but the current line for Fordham relief pitcher Kai Rayum, and as I said, not final yet, still in charge for that base runner over at first in Paul Catalano, but Rayum, 10 batters faced. 44 pitches in two innings pitched. He gave up three runs, two of which are earned, barring any more offense from the Stags. In this inning, three hits, two walks, and a strikeout for the senior transfer from Nebraska Omaha. Now if you're Fordham, you cannot let Fairfield's lead keep on bubbling up. You want to keep this within four runs and then get to work offensively in the bottom half of the inning. That's going to require your bullpen to put in some serious legwork and keep you in this ball game. There's a reason why MLB teams are always looking for relievers around the trade deadlines because these type of games can break out in an instant. Just need an out here and sometimes you're only called on for one like Mr. Scott is in this situation and check swing over We'll take a look from Scott Davis. He said that he goes around first base umpire for this contest. will give Nate Scott, a fellow Scott there, his first strike. It's 0-1 now to the shortstop Luke Nomura. Scott fires over to first base. A nice little pickoff move. Going to keep Catalano over there honest. Keep him on his toes. But Nomura, a fly out to center field and a strikeout on his tally today. Scott ahead in the count, 0-1. Catalano will take off for second. Here's the throw from Pietro. It's a good one, but not in time. Much, much too late. Another stolen base for the Stags. The second stolen base of the day for Catalano. And on the year, now that it's his second of the day, we'll look at it right now on the year. That is his third. Two stolen bases gives him three on the year. It's 0-2 to Nomura. Scott checks over at second. Back again at second and deals to Prieto. Good block there by Diego, and it's a good waste pitch. It's 1-2. And and Fairfield showing some supreme aggression to nab second base up four with two outs in this inning. They're not going to go away quietly. They want to tack on to their lead. A gutsy steal. And here's Scott. 
out of the stretch. And the one two is low and away. That's ball two. The count evens up now at two and two. Deuces wild will do it again. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner on second base, the batter, Luke Namura. Five to three lead. Excuse me, seven to three lead for Fairfield as Namura jacks that one into the left center field gap on the run is teasy he can't get it and it bounces over the wall for a ground rule double colin once again another rbi for the stags but more importantly with two outs it's an eight to three ball game Oof, man did he give that one a ride i kind of thought that one was going to drift over the wall at a certain point teasy gave it a good try which is wasn't going to lay out for it didn't want to allow the base runner to advance to third or even worse get an inside the park home run wouldn't have made a difference the ball bounced over the wall fairfield is cooking right now will and here is zach selinger the fordham ram formally second baseman played his undergrad years with the rams as that one is lined back to scott on the mound a nice play to gather himself and flip it over to get selinger on the ground out but how Ever. At the completion of this inning, Fairfield nearly bats around, sends eight batters to the plate. It'll be four hits, five, four runs, no errors, and one man left on base. But Fairfield, they jump out in front by five. It is eight to three. The Stags over the Rams here at Houlihan Park in the second game of this day night doubleheader on a gorgeous St. Patrick's Sunday. You are listening to Fordham Baseball on WFUV Sports. Hi, my name is Ryan Rucco, WFUV Class of 2008. WFUV is your home for all things Fordham Athletics with live coverage of Fordham football, Fordham men's and women's basketball, in addition to our Saturday show one-on-one. -on -one. Stay right here on 90.7 FM for all things WFUV sports. A less than desirable fifth inning for the Fordham Rams, giving up three runs with two outs. The Fordham bullpen trying to hold it together in the day-night doubleheader. The Fairfield Stags, they lead you here in this one, 8-3, to three, as Will Talent joined by Colin Lochran with you here all day through here at Houlihan Park. It's a gorgeous day for some early spring baseball as the OO. To lead off man, Ryan Teasy is low, and it's 1-0 to the Fordham center fielder. Once again, Ryan Teasy finds himself leading off in a spot where Fordham, quite frankly, needs a catalyst to get something started, Will. Always a reliable option to have at the top of anyone's lineup, but for Coach Kevin Layton, he's been quite the staple in the leadoff spot for the last two seasons in a row as he's really fighting off these outside fastballs here from Allison, who's given them at a steady dose, but TZ does a great job of fighting it back. It's one and two to Ryan TZ. Alexson working really fast here. TZ, he grounds one over to third base. It'll be Ferrara. He gathers and throws on to first base. It's the tall Matt Bergevin over there. Five to three on the put out is TZ. He goes down two for, excuse me, one for three on the day. And Daniel Bucciero still searching for his first hit of this game, but maybe another hit to add to his doubleheader today. And Ben Allickson is in a pitcher's dream of a scenario. He has complete freedom to throw whatever he would like with that lead. And it's Bucciero skying one to Bucciero in right field, and Matt Bucciero coasting over towards the foul pole there as Daniel Bucciero will fly out. That's really cool that we got to witness that today, Colin. Bucciero flies out to his identical twin brother Bucciero on the collegiate diamond it doesn't really get much better than that the Bucciero bros in full <laughs> effect today at Houlihan Park I'm losing it Colin here's Andrew Canellis 
one for two on the day. A ground out to shortstop in the first inning and a base hit back in the third. He'll take low and away. It's 1-0 and oh to the graduate right fielder. Now is hitting 276 on the season, three home runs. With two outs, you give him the green light to try and pop one here. Could it spark some momentum? Open stance with a very fast leg kick. Kind of looks like Jose Batista, but a little faster. Batista very much smoother, I would say, with his swing. But I could see the emulation from here. There had to be some Jose Batista, you know, inspo with this stance. Absolutely. As Canellas will take the 2-0 and oh, down the middle for a strike, it's two and one. So does that mean in the event that he does hit a critical home run, do we get the bat flip as well? Is that part of the gamut here? You know, I'm going to leave that up to Andrew as he grounds one, rolls it over fastball right there down to Dean Ferrara, the third baseman getting in his reps. The second 5-3 to three put out of the inning will send the Rams down in order in the fifth. One, two, three goes Fordham, and that will do it. Here for the fifth, no runs, no errors. Or excuse me, no hits, no runs, no errors in the Fordham half of the fifth. Still eight to three stags over the Rams. You're listening to Fordham Rams baseball, powered by WFUV Sports. Hi, this is Michael Kay, WFUV class of 1982. WFUV is your home for all things Fordham athletics with live coverage of Fordham football, Fordham men's and women's basketball, in addition to our Saturday show, One on One. Stay right here on 90.7 FM for all things WFUV sports. Hand Park in the Bronx, New York. Another beautiful day for baseball as Nate Scott on the mound for the sixth inning. And we're going to have a pinch hitter to start things off for the Fairfield Stags. And it'll be Peyton Warwick. Pinch hitting for Fairfield. And he is going to bat in place of the designated hitter, Tyler Kipp. Nate Scott, his third appearance of work on the young season, made two appearances back in February, once against Akron and the other against Maine. Both two inning plus performances for the senior at a new Providence, New Jersey in those outings. And on pace to do that here as the pinch hitter, Warwick, wallops one into right field he's going to make a long hard turn at second he's going to take it and he's going to go all the way sliding head first a great base running decision by the pinch hitter warwick it's peyton warwick leading off this sixth frame for the stags with a lead off double warwick was hitting 429 entering that at bat boosts his average yet again with a lead off double here in the top of the sixth well peyton warwick Leading things off with that double in the top half of the sixth. Nate Scott trying to pitch out of an immediate jam with the leadoff guy Ryan Stolo up now who bluffs a bunt and takes it outside for a ball. Moving Daniel Bucciaro to play even with the bag. It's 1-0 to the Stags center fielder. You know, Will, it's funny we call it a jam, only one runner, but at this time in the ballgame, any amount of traffic Fairfield can get will be a jam for Fordham. It's definitely a Jimmy jam as Bucciero shades out of play in front of the Stags dugout to make the putout, call it a P5 pop out to the third baseman. Nate Scott desperately needed that out right there as a the big contact part of the order comes up for the Stags and 350 plus hitter Dean Ferrara, Wyckoff, New Jersey native, steps in now for Fairfield. This is a guy that can 
add another run for Fairfield in the blink of an eye. All he needs is a single to get the job done. Team Ferrara, he'll sky one out to Teasy in the center field, shading over to right center field. Definitely should move Warwick over to third base as it does. Another sack fly for Ferrara doing his job. Moves the runner from second to third base, giving his number three hole hitter, Matt Bergevin, quite another opportunity to add to his tally today, Colin. And Nate Scott doing a nice job of rebounding after allowing the lead off double to start this top of the six. Escaping here with a zero would be a huge victory for a Fordham team trying to claw their way back in within striking distance. Bergevin a ground out victim to Chris Gennaro back in the fifth inning of this one. He'll tank outside for a ball. It's 1-0 to the Fairfield first baseman. Infield shifted towards the left side. And he definitely went around on that one. Don't even really need to check as Rich Franco does that for us. And it's a strike, evening up the count at one and one. Two away, runner on third base, and that is the pinch hitter, Peyton Warwick. And that's a foul ball, first base side out of play. It's gonna head over to Southern Boulevard and the count now in Nate Scott's favor, one and two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Fairfield ahead of Fordham. It's eight to three in the afternoon slate of this day night doubleheader. I would not expect this pitch to be anywhere near the zone, Will. He has a couple of balls to work with. See if you can get Bergevin to chase something. Well, Bergevin a strikeout back in the first inning. Kuna had his number. Will Scott have it here? And it's a line drive, just foul. Left field line out of play and over by the goal post there in front of Keating Hall. And that was a gutsy pitch. Moved him inside a little bit. You don't necessarily want to challenge him there because if you reach a pole hitter in his sweet spot, you're going to pay for it dearly. Scott ready. Bergevin ready. Warwick the runner at third. 1-2 the count from Scott. And that one just misses outside and low. A good slider there from Scott. And the count will even up. He, we'll go deuces, deuces wild again. He was inside, moved him outside. Now on the next pitch, you start to wonder where he's going to land. It gets the hitter off kilter just a touch. We'll have to see if he's going to go with a fastball or something off speed here. Fastball, changeup, slider mix for Scott. It's a 2-2 two -two count. And the pitch from the senior is fouled back behind the screen once again. And we will do it again at two balls and two strikes. Obviously wasn't the catcher here, so I didn't have the best vantage point. Almost looked like he tried to split the difference and cut it right down the middle with a changeup in that instance, Well, A little bit right there. Just uh, get him out in front, and he did on that pitch. Pulling the changeup gave that one away. But here's the 2-2, and that one's lofted in to right field, and it's going to get down out of the reach of the 6-7 T.J. Wachter and in front of Andrew Canellis. Hit it where they ain't, as they always say, in Fairfield doing a great job of that. Colin, their fifth two-out RBI in the last three innings, and they lead this one by six. It's 9-3. to three. I was going to say, I was hoping you were keeping track of that one. I'm not sure if we have access to that, but five RBIs on oh, two-out opportunities. Oh, you do have access to it. We do have that. That is it's a It's my head set. because it drives me nuts. <laughs> there you go. We love, we love the madman in the booth here, Will. But that is a major stat. It just goes to show Fairfield is doing a nice job of hitting in critical spots, keeping themselves in the driver's seat of this ballgame. And here we are once again, Colin. Here is Ethan Hibbard. Big stick in the lineup, two for two. As Colin said earlier in the broadcast, the fourth ever three-homer game as Ethan dribbles it down the third base line. Bucciero, tough play on that one. Tried to barehand it. Really couldn't do a whole lot there. And Hibbard, a three-hit performance after a three-home run performance yesterday. He'll add an infield single to his tally. He's three for three. And once again, Colin, it's first and second with two men out. 
and not the kind of guy you want to face, the other Buchiero, it's Matt Buchiero. And once again, how quickly an inning can turn. Just a moment ago, we were talking about Fordham escaping with a zero here in the top of the six. Now this could balloon even more for Fairfield. As Matt Buchiero grounds one down a third base line, and it's out of play. 0-1 to the Stags right fielder. Nate Scott set, keeping tabs on the runner at second, and there's a quick little biting slider outside corner of the plate. Matt Bucciaro didn't love it. It's 0-2, though. No balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on in the si top half of the sixth. Scott deals, and it's lined out in the right field. Canellis going back on it. He turns, and it's well out of here. Matt Bucciaro the better Bucciero today so far. It's a three-run shot. I don't know if he's going to hear the end of that one, he being Daniel, but Matt Bucciero, it's a three-run homer with two outs in the sixth inning. The Fordham bullpen having a very, very difficult time, Colin, putting batters away with two outs, and this one really, really starting to get out of hand. It's those two-out critical moments that sometimes make the difference in a ball game, and Fairfield is making the most of their opportunities. That time, an absolute missile from Bucciero. Bucciero doing exactly what you're supposed to do with that one. It was an outside pitch. He took it to right field as a right-handed hitter. You got to do it, and he did it with prowess, using the wind as well. Definitely helped out a ton, but gosh, man. Eight now. Eight runs with two outs in innings played for the Rams today. And man, Colin, I just, you know, I don't really have any words. It would be a one run game if that weren't the case, but that's just how baseball goes sometimes. You got to get three outs. You don't use, you got to get two, but the buck does not stop there. And some more action over in the Fordham bullpen as Scott just tries to get through this one. He's ahead in the count, 0-2. And, and that changeup misses down in the zone, the count 1-2. and two. To Paul Catalano. Catalano, two stolen bases, one for three on the day. Another foul ball from Catalano. Stags left fielder. Catalano one for three today with two RBIs to his name, hitting 278 on the year. And that one served out in the left field. That's going to get down, but a foul ball. Foul ball, my mistake. I thought that was getting down. Having a little trouble with the lines there, Colin. Still have some football <laughs> lines up. But that's just part of the beast. A foul ball, and we'll do it again at one and two. And how close was that to being an extra base hit for Catalano? And with how wide that left field is, he might have been able to stretch that into a triple or Could even have. more. And Scott's 1-2 will miss low. The count will even up once again. It's 2-2. Two and two. Nate Scott, 24 pitches in his two innings of work. It's probably a little more. The stat sheet that I'm looking at has not updated all the way as that one misses so 0-2 to 3-2, definitely not what you want to see if you are Coach Kevin Layton as that's going to make your bullpen decisions a little tougher. 0-2 to 3-2, the 3-2 offering to Catalano once again. Oh, not fouled off, just gets past Prieto and Catalano going to reach. How about this one, Colin? Going to reach on strikes. Isn't that the kind of game this has turned into for Fordham? Fairfield finding ways to reach base even when they strike out. That's how you know it's not your day. And for Fordham, they had one half of a good day, just unable to finish it off thus far through six against Fairfield. And it'll bring, that will bring Coach Kevin Layton out, making the slow trip to the rubber. Going to have to change his pitcher once again for the third time in today's contest. So it was Dominic Kuna, Kai Rayum, Nate Scott could not get the job done. The plot thickens for the Rams. So we'll have yet another relief pitcher here. It'll be number 24, the freshman Brixton Lofgren. Brixton Lofgren. The freshman getting an opportunity to come in in garbage time for the Fordham Rams. And 
these are key opportunities for younger players, Will. You never know when you're going to do something that will impress your coach, your manager, whoever on this roster or within this staff. Make no mistake, these are still critical opportunities for young players trying to make their mark here in the Bronx. A look at Aiden Dowd earlier this morning comes in and just absolutely shoves five innings pitched of zero run baseball. And if I have the stats right in front of me, which I do now, Aiden Dowd in the first contest of the day, five innings pitched, only two hits, two walks, and six strikeouts. Obviously, that is going to rub Coach Kevin Layton the right way. He wants to see that out of his freshman 100%. And Brixton Lofgren, like this kid, to see him pitch a ton, has some very lively stuff, a lot of life on that fastball, puts in a lot of work, so hopefully this outing bodes well for the freshman. Lofgren, the Miami native, was a four-year varsity player at Gulliver Prep in Miami, Florida, named Pitcher of the Year for Miami-Dade County in District 15. Well, his battery mate will have a little bit of uh, similar turf to him Diego Prieto also airing from the Miami area going to Christopher Columbus High School so two Miami boys trying to lock it down and do what they do best up in the Big Apple Brixton Lofgren down in the count now 2-0 and oh, I should say behind in the count it's the hitter now Luke Namura the shortstop for the Stags today. He is one for two, a monster RBI double back in the fifth inning. Gave the Stags an eight-run lead. Now that lead up to 12. Three different innings in which the Stags have recorded four or more runs as Nomura fouls that one off the screen. Lofgren. Behind in the count, two and run. One, runner leading off of first. Nomura fouls that one out of play. And the count evens up at two and two. And for Lofgren, this is a low intensity spot. You have to attack the zone and try and get these hitters out in short order. If they get a hit, they get a hit. What's important is that you start hitting your spots and attacking the strike zone. Lofgren deals high, and that one misses. It's three and one now to the Fairfield shortstop, Luke Nomura. Yeah, you like the idea there. Went off speed, just couldn't get it to go down towards the lower half of the zone. You have to have a better follow through on that pitch if you're looking to get a K. A full count now. Correction on the scoreboard as Lofgren's full count offering is going to miss upstairs for a ball four. And an, another base runner for Fairfield with two away in the this top half of the sixth frame. Zach Selinger will come up now for Fairfield. <coughs> First offering there from Lofgren is fouled out of play, third base side off the bat of Selinger, the count 0 and 1 to the former Fordham second baseman. Selinger takes the breaking ball inside for a strike. The count now 0 and 2. Two very nicely placed pitches from Lofgren so far. This would be a big out for the freshman. And the pitch from Lofgren, that one's going to miss, but not a bad miss up 0 and 2. Going to waste a pitch there, make it 1 and 2 now. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Four runs scored on the inning. It's 12 to four Fairfield with two runners on. It's first and second, two outs. Brixton Lofgren, the pitcher, he deals. And that one also misses low. Deuces wild once again. It's two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on in this top half of the sixth frame. And this is where the buck should stop for Fordham. You don't want to let the Fordham Ram, the former Fordham Red, and more insult to injury. And Zellinger deep down the right field line, but Canellis is going to take a look, and it's going to go foul. Zellinger did put a charge into that one. Ha is known for utilizing that porch out in right field. Many opposite field home runs to his name. Many memorable opposite field home runs off the bat of Zach Zellinger. 
during his time in the maroon and white. But now repping the red and white. The 2-2 two -two from the freshman Lofgren. Did it hit him? They're going to say no. Franco, home plate umpire, he says no. The count will move to full once more. The base runners will be in motion. It's 12-3 Fairfield. Top of the sixth inning, full count. Two outs, and Brixton Lofgren deals. And it's a ground ball base hit through the left side of the infield out of the reach of a diving Chris Gennaro. And the throw gets away. It hits off of the base runner, Matt Bergevin, from the throw coming in from Keen Saylor. Nevertheless, a lot went down in that play as a run scores. It'll be Paul Catalano scoring. And the run out at the plate, it'll be Luke Nomura out at home on the throw, but a run does score on that base hit from Zach Selinger having himself a day back in the Bronx. Oh boy, lots of runs, lots of hits. We had five hits, four runs scored, excuse me, five runs scored for the Fairfield Stags. They lead 13 to three. You are listening to Fordham Rams Baseball on WFUV Sports. Hey everyone, Brian Raybax here, one of your New York Yankees beat reporters for WFUV Sports. Along with Lou Orlando and Will Talent, we've got you covered for live game coverage, post-game analysis, season updates, and just about everything you need to know about the Bronx Bombers. You can follow me on Twitter, at Brian Raybacks, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for special Yankee feature reports all season long. And we are back here at Houlihan Park. Not so much the pitcher's duel that we saw in our first matchup in the AM against Army, but it is a 13 to three Fairfield lead over the Fordham Rams. We do apologize about that. Some brief technical di difficulties here, but one away now in the bottom of the sixth inning, T.J. Walker, he will step in for the Fordham Rams, having himself a heck of a day, dating back to the earlier AM matchup. And Walker will take a strike low and in on the knees. It's 0-1. Fordham right now down 13 to three. Once again, you're not getting it back all at once. If you want to make a run at this, just string together some hits. And it's a ground ball over to Ferrara at third who fires over to Bergevin at first for the second out of the sixth frame. And Michael Taylor getting set to come to the bat, come to the plate, excuse me, for Fordham. 0 for one today with a walk, Will, and You'd like to see him get a base knock. Doesn't have anything to warrant having an average, that average at zero so far this year. Ben Alexson, the starting pitcher, still out there for the Stags, up to five and two thirds innings pitched. Now is a strike taken upstairs to Mike Taylor. 0-1 to the senior infielder. Takes inside on that fastball. It is one and one, but Ben Alexson, 23 batters faced, 68 pitches thrown in five and two-thirds innings, just three earned runs and five hits. Lowers his season ERA to 4.76. Thus far, as that offering is also low. Count now up to two and one. Mike Taylor walked and grounded out 
to shortstop in his only two trips thus far. Taylor, foul ball, that one will leak over to the parking lot. Count evens up at Deuces Wild once again. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Top half, excuse me, bottom half of the sixth. Fairfield up 13 to three over the Fordham Rams. That one, they're gonna say that it hit off of Taylor's bat. Unbelievable, they're gonna call it a strike. Wow, I'm actually appalled with that call. Very much so, Colin. Home plate umpire Rich Franco with the kind of day that Fordham is having, I just, you know, you can't really make that call. I know it hit his hand and it is a strike, but that is just, oh man. <laughs> Coach okay. Layton having a conversation with the home plate umpire and a warranted conversation at that. You're just having one of those kinds of days, Colin, and, you know, there's not really anything you can do. The rules are the, the rules, I guess I'm just... Speaking out of frustration, but Taylor putting together a very nice at-bat, and the young man gets the at-bat taken right from him in a 10-run game, but it is what it is. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. The Stags, they still lead the Rams by a score of 13-3. to You are listening to Fordham Baseball, powered by WFUV Sports. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Percyinen. And I'm Will Grant. And we're two of the hosts for WFUV's very own basketball podcast, Pick and Pod. Tune in weekly for updates on our takes of the latest around the NBA and exclusive insight from our very own Knicks and Nets beat reporters. We'll have you covered on everything from all of the NBA's latest drama we know and love to debating all year long which team will get to lift that golden Larry O'Brien in June. Don't miss a beat from the hardwood on WFUV's Pick and Pod. Well, it'll be Brixton Lofgren once again to start the inning for the Rams. I should say once again, he cleaned up and closed the sixth for the Rams. He'll open the seventh here as we kick things off. Top half of the seventh, 13 to three in the PM edition of this day night doubleheader here at Houlihan Park. Warwick, one for one, had a double earlier. He got a good piece of contact, just drove the ball towards right field. That'll get you a hit nine times out of ten, barring an incredible defensive play, Will. Peyton Warwick, a double in his first and only at-bat pinch hit at-bat off the bench. Last inning, he'll start things up. The Stags batting around in just about back-to-back -back innings. As Lofgren, he fires in a strike there, and the count will now be at two and one to Walrick. Lofgren, he's set, he deals, and there's a foul ball right over our heads in the box here, and it'll clank on down if you can't hear that right down in the front row of the bleachers. And the count evens up at two balls and two strikes apiece. Lofgren with an opportunity to attack here, record his first K of the day. Lofgren, and Walrick will just Roll that one over, nice play right there by the first base coach, and we'll do it again, two balls and two strikes. 14 hits for Fairfield, 13 runs, no errors. Three runs for Fordham, five hits, two errors. Lofgren's 2-2 two -two is ripped, but foul once again. Walrick making the freshman work a little bit to get this out here. We'll do it all over, two balls, two strikes. Nobody out in the top of the seventh inning. And that one is caught on and missed. Strike three, a great pitch there by Brixton Lofgren. He'll get his first K of the afternoon. And a nice job right there for Brixton Lofgren. Good pitch from Lofgren, that's his first K 
as you mentioned. And for the freshman, having that ability to punch batters out could be useful down the stretch once you head towards conference play. You want to know that a guy has that punch out ability if he is to come in with runners in scoring position, with runners on base in general. Will. And you know, Colin, it's really, the, albeit the result of game two, it was a nice win in game one, but as Stolo swings and misses down in the count 0 and 2, but it's been a very nice thing to see in these freshman arms getting some reps and doing well. Aiden Dowd, Brixton Lofgren really, really looking the part and doing, paying major dividends for what will become a thinner Fordham pitching staff once again, like last year. And for the program, that may very well be the future is these young arms, and you want to see how they'll perform in different kinds of situations. Obviously, this is not a high leverage situation, but anything is something at the collegiate level, and you just want to see how they'll stack up against the teams you'll be playing week in and week out. And that looked like a changeup that just missed the inside half of the plate right there. Good pitch there from Brixton, and uh, the count will even up at 2-2, two and two, though. Two balls, two strikes, one out, 13-3. to three. Fairfield over Fordham on this beautiful St. Patrick's Sunday. Lofgren deals. Did he go around on it? Not even going to get an appeal. We'll go straight to the full count. It's three balls and two strikes. Umpires have been stingy with their calls this afternoon. Good strike zone, though, overall throughout both games. As Stolo, he nubs that one little corkscrew foul ball over to the Fairfield dugout. And once again... Fairfield doing a very good job, very much so differently than what Army was doing. And Army, a lot of first pitch swinging, but contact results put in play. Uh, Fairfield, though, really making the Fordham pitching staff work today for all four arms that have gone out there so far. And that one is taken low and in for a ball as Stolo, he works a walk a second time. He has reached base thus far this afternoon. Fairfield has been patient indeed, Will, and it makes all the difference. Once you get into those leverage counts, the pitchers have no choice but to throw something over the heart of the zone just to get a strike in there in general. That's where throwing competitive strikes becomes much more important early in counts. And that will bring in the contact machine, Dean Ferrara. He likes to swing on the first, first pitch. This is the third straight at bat in which he does, and it's a third straight fly ball pop out. This one over to the second baseman, Madden Ako. Ferrara retired on just one pitch once again. And there are two away for the freshman Brixton Lofgren, doing a very nice job. Ferrara clearly frustrated with that one. A high contact here this today, making contact, but just not finding the appropriate holes, as that will bring up Matt Bergevin, the double and a single in a two for four effort today for the big first baseman. Lofgren's 0-0 is outside and in there for a ball as that one is up and then look out. The Virgin has to hit the deck, throw his bat down. Breaking ball that didn't quite break out of the hands, a little no, no wrinkle. As some of my old baseball coaches would say, didn't have any wrinkle in that one. And it's 2-0. And that one cut on and missed. Good fastball, lively movement there from Lofgren. And it's a two and one count now. Critical pitch upcoming for Lofgren. You don't want this count to shift to three and one in advantage of the hitter. Grooves a strike right there, right on the knees. Not for Bergevin, but plenty for Lofgren. As he looks to close the door on a quick seventh inning relatively all things considered Lofgren good block there from Prieto discontinues any advancement that Stolo was attempting to make Stolo center fielder definitely has some wheels he reached base twice today Bergevin is ready in the pitch that one is low runner was going on the 3-2 count and that one misses Ball four, and it's once again another two-out base runner. 
And this is a part of the freshman tryout process, if you will. You begin to look for areas of improvement. Right now, Lofgren, that's his third walk of the afternoon. So if there's something he's going to have to work on going forward, it's really not allowing himself to be bitten by the walk bug, if you will. And that is going to do it for backstop Ethan Hibbert, who concludes one heck of a weekend here on Rose Hill as his counterpart, number eight, Aiden Baglino, will pinch it and presumably take over for things as the Fairfield backstop. That first pitch is grounded off the third base side and out of play. 0-1 quickly to the new backstop, Baglino. The 1-1 one one is dropped in for a strike. A good 12-6 action on that breaking ball from Lofgren. And the freshman once again ahead in the count, 1-2, and two, needing to find a way to shut the door and end the threat here in the seventh. One ball, two strikes. Lofgren deals, and it's outside for a ball. Once again, we will go deuces wide. Two and two the count with two outs and two runners on base. It's 13-3 to three Fairfield over Fordham on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Will Talent joined alongside Colin Lochran. And once again, it is a three and two count as Baglino works it full in his first plate appearance of the afternoon. Runners will be in motion. 3-2, two, two outs, two runners on. The 3-2 to Baglino is fouled off the screen and out of play. We're gonna do it once more. It's three and two. Worth noting, there is someone moving in the Fordham bullpen, warming up. So in the event that Lofgren cannot get out of this inning, there is a move to the bullpen, perhaps waiting in the wings. And that one is flying in the air to center field. TZ going back on it, now running in, makes the catch on the run. And that will do it for the fair field threat here in the seventh. But this time around, no runs, no hits, no errors, and just one man left on base. Fairfield maintaining the 10-run lead. It's 13-3 here in the Bronx. The Stags, they lead the Rams as we've played six and a half. It's time to get up and stretch, sing, take me out to the ball game. And we will be right back here on WFUV Sports. Brian Gregor here, joined with Michael Calamari and Andrew Galata. Three of your hosts for Nosebleeds, WFUV's only baseball podcast. Tune in every week as we recap the latest from the Bronx and Queens, as well as news from around the MLB. You can listen to Nosebleeds on Apple, Spotify, WFUVsports.org, or wherever you get your podcasts. Take a trip around the bases all season long with the Nosebleeds podcast on WFUV Sports. And we are back as the YMCA commences here at Houlihan Park. It's a 13-3 deficit. The Rams face at the hands of the Fairfield Stags, a team they've already seen once. They lost that contest yesterday 10-8. But here we are, a little bit of a different story now. Colin is a new pitcher, number 30, Jack Erbeck will make an appearance here in the bottom half of the seventh for the stats. Airbeck through five and one-thirds innings of work has surrendered five hits, struck out seven, has an ERA of 1.69. He's looking to help close the door on a Fordham Rams team that has been held silent at the plate since the third inning. Rams got two in the bottom of the second, one in the bottom of the third. Zilch since then will. Well, Airbeck a 6'3", 220-pound right-hander out of Skillman, New Jersey. Another New Jersey native, a attendee of the Hun School of Princeton, where he did high school. He's in a, his grad year now. Played all four years of undergrad 
with Fairfield now taking his talents to his graduate year. Once again, sticking with Fairfield as that breaking ball is over for a strike, and it'll be Andrew Canellis. I'm sorry, that is not Andrew Canellis. It is Madden Akko at the plate. And the count evens to the freshman out of Los Angeles, California. It is one and one. Akko one for two so far today. Struck out once as well. Airbeck. He deals the 1-1, one, one, and that one's crushed out into the left center field gap. That should get down for extra bases, and he doesn't want a running play. I jumped the gun once again. That'll be an F7 and a nice running grab to his right is Paul Catalano, but I thought that had extra bases written all over it, Colin, especially with how balls in the gap have been looking today. Akko gave it a good ride, but a pristine defensive play by the left fielder. Fordham just hasn't been able to catch those kind of breaks where balls find the gaps or the spaces or the creases they can get through. Well, it'll be the senior shortstop, Chris Gennaro, who is perfect today. Absolutely. I, I apologize. He had a fielder's choice in the first game, but r has reached base in every chance that he's gotten today. And to go along with four RBIs, Two for two in this contest alone against the Stags as he takes inside for a ball and the count evens up at one and one with one out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Christian Arrow slowly raising that batting average now up to 246. Also has a home run and eight RBIs. Slowly but surely getting into the right spot. Getting back into the groove of things after a quite slow start to begin his season was under that Mendoza line, the elusive 200 mark for quite some time now, creeping up over that point, especially after today. Down in the count, one and two. Here's the pitch from Erbeck, and that one's right in there for a strike. The ferocious 12 to six breaking ball. Gennaro just kind of froze there and buckled those knees. No real chance for number five. And it'll be a looking strike three to Gennaro bringing up Diego Prieto for the third time today and his second, his first and second trips all resulted in strikeouts. So looking for a little bit better of fortunes here as the Fordham backstop quickly goes down 0-1. Yeah, Prieto trying to avoid the hat trick this afternoon and obviously that's not the kind of hat trick you want to have in the sport of baseball. And Prieto swings through the fastball right there. Nothing doing. And quickly down 0-2. Oh 0-2, and two. Oh and two, no balls, two strikes, two outs. A 13-3 lead for Fairfield. In the bottom half of the seventh inning, Jack Airbeck's 2-2 is cut on and missed. Strike three. And the graduate student has closed the door for the Fairfield Stags as that is the mercy rule. It is 13 to three, your final score. That'll be the ball game. It is a mercy rule as the Stags win by 10 or more runs at the completion of 10 innings. Jack Erbeck comes in and shuts the door. Colin, two strikeouts in a very brisk one, two, three inning as the Rams, they split the day night doubleheader here in the Bronx. Just not the performance that Fordham was hoping to have in the second game of this doubleheader. And they had played Fairfield close in the previous games that they competed against them in this season. Just weren't able to get anything cooking offensively. The bullpen struggled to throw strikes over the plate. At times, it made all the difference. Credit to Fairfield. They were particularly patient at the plate and took advantage in situations where there was already two outs and scored runs. Kai Rayum, Nate Scott came out of the bullpen as well as Brixton Lofgren to relieve Dom Kuna, all of which, though, having a tough time to muster together the necessary outs for the Fordham Rams, and the offense was the offense, was kind of the same as it was against Army, just not as consistent. But your final line in this seven-inning contest, Fairfield 13 runs, 14 hits, and no errors. Fordham three runs, five hits, and two errors to their tally. And Fordham, they split the day-night doubleheader, Colin. They are four and six in their last, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, they have won four of their last six contests and will continue their good fortunes, hopefully, at the start 
of next week. But that is going to do it. Thank you so much, Colin Lochran, for being a wonderful color, color commentator as always. But it's been quite the day at the ballpark, and the Fordham Rams, they will drop the second edition of the day night doubleheader 13 to 3 to fairfield overall in the day they go one and one winning that first contest against army four to two for colin lochran i am will talent and we say thank you for joining us all the way through this one for the day night doubleheader here at Hulahan park signing off for now have a good rest of your saint patrick's day